Right, two peers Morgan I sense This show is nothing if not a fearless forum for fiery debate. I have strong opinions, but like all the world's eminent thinkers, I'm open to changing my mind. So tonight I'm trying something a little new. be wrong it's the title of his new segment first up is the royal family worth the money the annual crown report into royal finances was released today king charles and co appear to have maxed out the royal credit card last year they spent 107 million pounds while the sovereign grant was only 86.3 million pounds that means we're in the hole for around 20.7 million pounds extra big numbers indisputably but in my view the royal family still represents stunningly good value i say they're worth every penny we're here to debate the complete opposite are Alex O'Connor, the YouTuber, um, Royal Skeptic, and Graham Smith, Chief Executive of the UK's leading Republican movement, Republic, who's just handed me his new book, Abolish the Monarchy, Why We Should and How We Will. So, clear we're on different, uh, we're on different paths here, but the rules are simple. Uh, you guys have until you hear this sound <laughs> to prove me wrong. I say the royals are worth every penny that this country gives them, which, by the way, is literally one penny per person in this country per year. Per day. <laughs> per day, not a year. Uh, so it's a penny a day per person in the country. Well, it's not. And the, point, the first thing to say about this, this debate is that the monarchy is not a financial transaction. So the, whether it makes a profit or not is neither here nor there. The measure of whether it's a good institution and worth keeping is whether it's good constitutionally, because that's what it's there for. Why are you so against and, it, out of interest? Well, because, firstly... Your whole life is devoted to ending... Yeah. The monarchy. Firstly, it's wrong in principle. It's not democratic. It stands on a completely different set of feudal values instead of the values of uh, accountability, equality and democratic mm -hmm. uh, rights and so on. Secondly, as an institution, it is not fit for purpose. It falls well short of the principles of public life. Um, I, I don't think it's going too far to say it's corrupt. And constitutionally, in terms of our politics and, and the way power is exercised, it funnels a lot of power. What have been the four downstream. most watched events globally involving this country in the last three years? Yeah, but that doesn't really. No, hang on. Well, you're going to say the weddings and the jubilees. Just answer, answer my yeah. question. You're going to say the weddings and the jubilees. I'm not oh. sure that's even the case because I think UEFA had. Um, well, forget, uh, big... forget football. But... Well, okay, you can't just say forget football. Well, national it's, it's national events. More it, what national what events. Most events yeah. except national events which, which, which universally show this country. But the coronation. At its best. Nine percent of this country were enthusiastic about the coronation. Fifteen percent by another poll. So, the, you know, in terms of royalists, most people. You know, the people that you can genuinely call royalists is less than 15%. All right, but, see, here's the point, I think, which I think you, both you guys are missing. But, I mean, try and convince me, Alex. I just think when the world looked at the Platinum Jubilee, for example, when the world looked in a very different tone at the Queen's funeral, the King's coronation, you look at these events and it shows Britain, in my view, at its greatest. The pomp, the pageantry, the ceremony, the military precision. Oh, Everything worked like clockwork. Everyone around the world who was watching this, who was watching, and I, as a caveat, many people are not interested, I get that, but the millions, tens of millions around the world that watched it thought better of our country. How many things has happened in our country in the last three years involving our leaders, for example, which have brought shame and ignominy to the country? Here, you have a chance to show us at our best. Uh, what what yes. price do you put on? There's that? nothing about the royal family that's brought us shame, in your opinion, that you've been sort of, oh, loads of relentlessly. <laughs> as human about. beings, yeah, the idea that the monarchy human beings, they are as, above the politics, they are as fragile country. as any of us. And you say, you know, it doesn't help us to escape the various political scandals of prime ministers and presidents. Well, does it? I, I thought you were the one who's constantly banging on about Harry and Meghan and how they're a disgrace to our country or whatever it is. I don't, I don't think. Well, I think they're, I think rather like you two, their attempts to damage the monarchy and bring it down are actually disgraceful because I happen to support the monarchy. But so few, that's, that's a different argument. A few big events is not an argument for a constitution which is second rate. It's not an argument for an institution that abuses public money, that abuses public office to lobby for their interests and so on. I mean, you know, 12, was it 13 years ago, 14 years ago now, the MPs' expenses scandal. Um, I'm sure you're one of the, the many commentators who are outraged by MPs spending public money on their own homes, their second homes. Yeah. And that was sort of hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds, sometimes tens of thousands of pounds. The royals spend millions, tens of millions. Yeah, but you know, my view of, of that, of my view of that well, is our money if, you're going to their... if you're going to have a monarchy and a royal family and they're performing over a thousand duties a year, like which parties. is not a lot. Well, they're, they're actually getting lots of charities they, and they do a lot of help for people, right? They couldn't do as private citizens. That, well, they, they could, but they wouldn't is... have the same impact. Okay. But here's my, here's my point. Here's my point. If you're going to have them, 
you should give them all the trappings. Why? Of a ro- why? Because where, otherwise the, they're not a royal family. The logic? They're not a monarchy. Where's the logic? The logic the, is, the, if you want we, people to buy into the magic of a monarchy and royal right. family, but it's not, you've got to give them the tools to not, be magical. It's not magic, it's, it's corruption. What would you have them in? A little te- Tesla? Uh, maybe, no. Maybe a, maybe a suit. Uh? That'd be fine. We could start by getting rid of these ridiculous garments. We spent most of the time that we've known what, dressed King like Charles you? dressed like me. I mean, and so to see him for the first time... You're the king dressed like you. Him, no offence. Well, but... he'd probably put on a tie. Uh? He'd look more like you, I suppose. Yes. To see exactly. him suddenly put on these robes would be like watching Rishi Sunak or someone suddenly yes, but it's don part of our history. ludicrous and actually, robes. It gives, but it's all, it gives us something it's so few other countries in the ridiculous. world have. Nobody can take it seriously. And you may not like Nobody it, can you take it seriously, seriously, but anyway. many around the world love it. If you go to the Caribbean, if you go to America, you go to Canada, many you go to India, you go anywhere in the world. Australia, and they bring they in just so monarchy, much money yeah. from tourism. Well, they, that's not true. It, it is true. No, it is. It, that's definitely not is true. It's definitely not true. Now, the, the thing is, there is no evidence. And I've sat down with the CEO and chair of Visit Britain uh, about a decade ago, and I said, there's no evidence that if we got rid of the monarchy, tourism would go down. And they said, yes, you absolutely You don't right. think the royal family there brings is, in any money from tourism? There is no yes. evidence that that tourism money wouldn't come in anyway. I mean, if you, just, like the if you just look at the money that came in in the weeks leading up to these big events that we've had over no, the last the, four years, Look at the visit huge numbers. amounts of money. If you look at the visit numbers, American tourists no, pouring the in, visit Australian numbers go, tourists, the Canadian visit numbers tourists. go down when these things happen. If you look at the visit numbers, they go down when these people things stay happen. away from these kinds of things. And, and if I may say, Cheshire Zoo is a bigger tourist attraction in the UK than Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle. Mm. I wouldn't be in favor of a state-funded ceremonial when opening. When was the last time hundreds of millions of people exhibit. around the world on I television watched, I certainly the, would watched not be the birth of a penguin at Chester Zoo? I certainly would not be in <laughs> I, favor don't, do they? of its <laughs> owners or its directors or indeed the, the, the sort of sometimes sinister and yet still to be pitied animals that go, are kept within its cages go, given any kind of political when office do we, over the rest of us. When do we beam the lives of the, the inmates of, tourists, of Chester Zoo the to whims the world? Of tourists I mean, are not a good the justification for political office. When the thing the that the tourists are spending money event? on I is mean, not the way to decide what about What about uh, Williams' campaign at the moment to end homelessness? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Funded by what? Funded, uh, by, funded, funded by us. And, and yeah. what's this, like three million, it's three million, million pounds? pounds. You say you don't like his campaign against homeless? I think it's, it's formative. formative. What have you got against the homeless? It's nothing he couldn't do huh? as we, a private citizen. We give him 22 million pounds. What do you have against the homeless? What is it? We, what? we give him 22 million pounds. Yes. We could spend that on. You don't want him to help the homeless. That's the most ludicrous thing you've said on this show, and that says a lot. The bar to, is low, I agree. To, to say that this is something that requires royalty, to say that this is something that requires he has some kind of political office, that he's going to inherit the head of, uh, head of statehood, the, that he's going to become the head of state of this country, that's got anything to do with his ability See, here's my to thing. get three million pounds to charity. I like talking to you guys, right? You, ridiculous. You, you, guys are, you argue your case with great passion, but in the end, it's just a negative anti-argument. No, it's not. That's what you are. Not at all. A pair of you wake case... up every day and you think, how do I end this thing I hate? Why don't you just ignore it? It's a bit like vegan. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. We're, we're having a vegan debate in a minute. It's a bit like vegans who run into steakhouses screaming abuse about well, no, meat. It's a bit like, if you don't like it's meat, a bit like, go and eat it's your a bit, gruel it's a bit in a little like, restaurant in the corner. It's a bit like saying... Leave me to eat my steak. It's actually a bit like say, getting up in the morning and saying, I want to end homelessness because I hate it. I want to end the monarchy right. because it is a bad thing. It's bad for Britain. It's bad for our government. It's not bad for Britain. It's bad for our government. And also, it's not it's bad, bad for our image. Two out of the three it's times. It's purely it's ceremonial when it comes to government. Two out of the three times that but I've ever spoken about this subject. The pomp and the because you've invited me to. Those are two what? of the three times that I've ever spoken about the subject in public. Yeah. It's because you've invited me to. So I don't think it's me who's banging on about this. It's not me who's waking up every day just desperate to see every the end of the monarchy. Every time we call you, you're, you're the Every time you call, we call you, your answering machine says, if that's Piers, I'll do it. So don't blame me. Uh, the klaxon has gone. The big question. Have you... <laughs> I think we know where this is going <laughs> on the first one. But have you proven me wrong? No. Yes. You have we convinced you, you is another question. You haven't. The thing is... Read my book and then come back to me later. I will read your book, but I've got a pretty good idea what's in it because it's got Owen Jones quoted on the front saying a crucial, riveting polemic. And what Owen Jones knows about crucial, riveting polemics can be written on a postage stamp well, which, has the posted, king, which has the King of the United Kingdom's head on it, by the way. Not <laughs> Owen Jones's. Uh, gentlemen. And God save him. A good well, Nobody indeed. else is going to in this country. <laughs> yes, they will. There's a lot more royal fans than you think. Uh, gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you. Your campaign will fail, but it will fail with passion, and I admire that. I'll bet you a tenner. OK. Is that £10 with King Charles's picture on it? Yes, it is. And- 